And so you are what they call an inclusive dating coach. Yes. What is What does that mean, inclusive dating coach? So a lot of dating coaches, uh, uh, first of all, in Los Angeles, there are, a lot of us know each other. We've yeah. all been doing it for a little while. Um, I A lot of the dating coaches that I know mainly focus on heterosexual, uh, cisgendered, um, uh, um, matrimonial-minded dating, right. which is totally fine. I have zero judgment around that. But then there's a lot of people, especially in the big city, who are doing things a little different. You know, there's some people who are, well, there's the LGBT community. You know, there's people who are polyamorous. There are people who are into all different lifestyles. And so I, I say inclusive because I, I want singles to feel like they can come to me without judgment. Oh, I see. Um, uh, and also, I know a lot of these lifestyles I'm speaking about, so also it's good to have a coach that kind of knows who you are and what your lifestyle is and what you're going through, and I'd like to think that's me. I, I, there's things I don't know. I don't know everything, but right. I know more than, say, someone who's only um, seeking out, uh, let's say, a mainstream vanilla relationship. Oh, I got you. And so do you give dating advice to transgender gender people? I do. And define transgender, what is that? So, so okay, so since I'm not transgender, I, so a transgender person could explain it better than I could, but the trans people in my life are people who from birth, from a very young age, felt like they did not match up with the gender they were assigned at birth as. So, you know, you know, you come out of your mother, it's a boy. Right. Um, and some people feel like they don't fit that. And they were labeled that because of body parts and certain anatomy things. But oh, they see. feel a certain way. And, you know, just really quickly on that topic, I have some very, uh, I'm actually dating somebody who is transgender. You uh, are? Yes, female to male. And uh, what? Yes, yes. What and, the? Yeah, yeah. And what's that um, like? Um, new experiences. So I, I only dated um, somebody who I've only dated cisgendered men. So men who were born as a boy feel like boys. That's all I dated growing up through my through my life. Right. And but I've always had people in my life of all everything. Right. Um, and obviously I'm someone who's not judgmental. And I met this person. If you met them, uh, you would look at them. Uh, he's six foot two, ex-military, um, very masculine looking. You would you would never know that he's transgender unless he told you. And so he's what you call stealth in public. Um, and I met him, and I'm like, this person is so attractive, and he actually looks like a lot of exes of mine. <laughs> And so there's some slight oh, differences, but, but not really. And so it's 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 been a really interesting journey for me in terms, well, first of all, being a dating coach, right? It's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, there's, I have so much to say about this experience and this relationship, but also it, it's an interesting place to be in um, to just be attracted to a human. And also whatever, even though I think I'm so open-minded and thought I was so open-minded and so woke and had all these friends, it's a different thing. You're, you're posed with a lot of different questions about yourself and what you thought about yourself and what you, how you judge others and think about others when you're presented with somebody who totally is different from what you expected. So to you are dating a woman who thinks that she is a man? I won't agree. That's that's not a correct statement. Um, I'm dating someone who was assigned female at birth. When you say assigned, meaning that God assigned this person as a female? Um, uh, I wouldn't say it like that either. But you, when the when when my my boyfriend was born, um, they were like, it's a girl. And, and, and this then, girl had a BJ. I won't talk about genitalia. Yeah, that's uh, just, just... Well, let's assume they had one. You can make whatever assumption okay. you'd like, sure. And sure. then at some point, this girl felt like a guy. Um, so let me say this. Uh, everyone's journey is a little bit different. Right. I have some other transgender people in my life who, um, you know, grew up feeling differently than, say, you know, my boyfriend felt. Uh, he's always felt very masculine. So I can't say that there were ever, like, feelings of, oh, I feel like a girl. I don't, I don't, I've not ever heard him say that. Right. So, yeah, but everyone's, everyone's journey is so different with that, you know? Like, 
um, he transitioned later in life. I don't want the interview to only be about him. Of I, course. I, but yeah. I also, it is a part of my life. It and helps us to understand why you... A million percent. Yeah. A million percent, yeah. And so when you first met... He's a met, lovely person. When you first met... Um, Met this person. Mm -hmm. Did you think it was a woman or a guy when you first saw? He was very. Eyes? Uh, looks like oh, okay. what we think a man looks like. And how did you discover it wasn't a man? He was very. He was straight up. Oh, he was. Oh yeah, yeah. There was. See, that's the thing that's it's a shame yeah. about what's happening in society right now. I feel like there's a lot of fear because people feel feel like they're going to be tricked. Right. Or. Oh, no surprise. And no, from the beginning, he was like, before our first date, we met on a dating app. And uh, before our first date, he messaged me and he was like, before we meet, I want to make sure you know that I'm trans. And he said it on his profile. I said, yeah, I said, I think I, a trans masculine, trans masculine was the word he used. I said, I think I know what that means. I have some transgender friends in my life. And he's like, I just want to make sure that you have all the information before we meet, right. uh, which I well, so appreciated, not, yeah, right? Absolutely. He checked in with me, and then he walked through the door again, six foot two, <laughs> muscular, ex-military. And actually, we just went through a really scary experience a couple um, weeks ago. I was in my neighborhood. We were getting breakfast, and a guy came up to us. My boyfriend's white. A guy came up to us. Your boyfriend is white? Yes. Oh, okay. This guy came up from around. I saw, I saw him, my boyfriend, look behind me. We were talking. Uh, he kissed me because he was about to go fly away for a, a business thing. This other person came behind me a foot from my face, looked in my eyes, and said, no one wants to see a nigger kissing, and then spit on both of us. And my boyfriend, my boyfriend jumped into action and put his body literally in between me and this guy who was, I don't know, he was coming at me. Right. Um, and I, so, it, again, that was another interesting thing of, like, I think people have a, 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 a specific idea or vision of what someone who's a different gender or, you know, all these things does. But he, he, he snapped into action to protect me in a moment's notice, you Amazing. know? More than, like, any cisgender guy I've dated in my life, you know? Wow. It's like, Cisgender yeah. mean a straight guy, heterosexual man. Cisgender meaning um, born... A boy feels like a boy man. Oh, okay. Yes, like you're a cisgendered man. Heter heterosexual guy. No, not necessarily. It just means that you feel like your gender. But like sexual orientation and like, you know, you can be cisgendered and be gay or you can be cisgendered and be straight. Amazing. So you just feel like, like I'm a cisgendered woman. I feel like a woman born a girl. But being a heterosexual man, there is no feeling to it at all. You just... Is but see, you are a man, but, but there's no feeling. But transgender it people like would the say only that time, too. They feel like it seems as though, from talking to people, mm -hmm. the only time the feelings come with identity is when you've been traumatized. Not all the time. I mean, I've known a lot of gay people in my life, uh, growing from you know growing up with a small age, and it's not necessarily that. It's just a different feeling. Like you said, there's a feeling you have, like you feel like a man. No, there is no feeling to a man. But you, you don't men, have any masculine feelings. No. Real men don't have feelings. They only have feelings if they've been traumatized, and so they try to make themselves feel like what they think a man feels. You're saying no well, emotion? No, men are not feeling. They're logical. Do you, did you, okay, I, okay, you know what? This is really, I love this. Okay, so, uh, you know, Kobe passed. I have never seen so many men cry Beta. And show emotion when that man died. No, with beta tragically, males. Tragically, right? What's that? No, with beta males. Wait, I, what, I'm sorry. Beta, no. beta males. Yes. I've beta. seen. Beta. Okay, no, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? But it's, you know what? Well, well I, I can, I, I'm not a man, so I right. can't, I can't, I can't speak to that. But what I can speak to is that I was very moved by the level of, emotion that was shown by guys I've never seen cry in my, cry in my life. Guys Amazing. who are super muscular, what people would think, is, you know, like dudes who are like boxers and like, you know, like I have a lot of athletes in my life. Right. You know, people like that who were just like bawling for like a week. So, I mean, I don't know. That's I mean, a sad story. But, but again, Jesse, you're talking to somebody who, you know, on so many levels, I don't, I, I don't think there's one way people are. I, I know for myself, I don't, I don't fit any stereotypes. I, you know, I, I, I did tell you, oh, there's not gonna be, not me, gonna be enough time. I want to go back real fast yeah, to yeah, the yeah, story with your boyfriend thing, so we can move on. Okay. And so you had never been with a transgender male person before, right? No, no. Before that time. Correct. And so you, he, he comes over to your place. Uh huh. And you decide. I, I might not answer this question, but go ahead. <laughs> 
And I'll be so, honest with you, though. Yeah. Of course. And so you decide, you know what, even though I know what this is, mm -hmm. let me adjust my mind to go along with it. How was that for you to know that? Mm -hmm. Had they had the surgery done and all that? I, I, I won't get into that. Oh. About How did you decide to pretend it was a man, even though you, in your mind you knew what it well, was? Well, there was no pretending because oh. it it's human beings, and I was attracted to this person. And, you know, I will say, I mean, there was definitely some element of surprise because I had not dated someone like him before right, yeah. in some ways. But I'm telling you, Jesse, this person that I met, my boyfriend, when I met him, I mean, he was so on brand with, like, almost all of the guys I dated in my life in terms of his energy, in terms of his presence, kind of the way he looks. Like, it, he wasn't that different. I mean, and so in that way, it wasn't like a huge adjustment. I will say that, you know, I am somebody, again, who maybe is more open-minded than most, but uh, it wasn't this huge, like, okay, I need to, like, change my brain so that I can, right. like, love this person. It, it, it wasn't like that. You're unusual for a black person because normally black people don't accept that kind of stuff, you know, they don't just accept anything that comes along. Uh, well, I, well, I, I don't and know. I, I don't know. I, I, again, I can't speak for all black people, but I know a lot of black people who are in the LGBTQ rainbow who do a lot of things, and <laughs> and, and and you know are you know. I also know some very straight black people too, but I, I just, I mean, I know what you mean. I think, I think in the black, and that's a whole other conversation. I think in the black community there is less acceptance yeah. and sometimes more resistance. Um, there's a lot of tradition, there's, you know, religion yeah. comes into play with a lot of things. But there's also, Jesse, I've seen, especially being a dating coach for 12 years, there's so much shame attached to how people feel and how people want to live their lives based on how their families are going to treat each other, how community sees them, how, you know, religion might judge somebody, that people aren't living their truth a lot of times. Yeah. And they're not happy. If I just, for me, it's, let's go back to dating, a dating, being a dating coach. For me, any client that comes to me, I do some speaking at colleges too around dating safety. And say there's like a 17 or 18 year old that I'm talking to, and they're like, you know, I, I, I you know, I want to be this, but I'm nervous because I don't want to say something to my parents. And this is necessar not necessarily about being gay or anything like that, but maybe someone, you know, maybe they, someone just doesn't want to get married. And but there's so much pressure or have kids and there's pressure around, you know, this this what we call the relationship escalator of meet someone, date someone, marriage, kids, whatever. Because that's the pattern in especially American society, if someone doesn't want to do that, there's so much judgment attached. And there's so much um, shame attached to maybe not doing something the way your parents want you to do it or society wants. The people literally, people are, I mean, anyway, I could get into a whole thing about it. But so, so my thing is to encourage and empower people to live however they feel is right for them, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. Right. That's my goal. So uh, one last question about your boyfriend. Okay, let's go. Do you take him around your family, your black family? Yeah. Your my family. cousin uh, from Minneapolis came into town to celebrate her birthday um, last year, and she brought all of her friends, and it was like, her and her four black girlfriends and me and my white transgender boyfriend. And, and he did, could hang, he's from South Texas. Like he's, he's around like ethnic people all the time. So it's not a big deal. He can hang. But did like, they know it wasn't yeah, a real man? Yeah, they, they know, I, I will not accept those words. Which word? But they, real man. Oh. But they, <laughs> but they, they loved him. They loved oh, really? him. And they yeah. knew the deal, the whole deal. They know certain things, but you know, like my cousin, she's family, so I might tell her more than I'll tell someone I just met. Oh, okay. You know, and because it really, because really, here's the thing: it's up to him, it's up to me, it's up to the individual to tell whoever they want to tell about them and their journey. Like Jesse, like I, I don't know your journey fully. I could never, even if we sat for three hours and talked, right? right. So it would be unfair for me to be like, oh, Jesse's this, Jesse's right. that. Yeah. That's just not my place. I so, got you. Yeah. So speaking of shame, yeah, when people are wrong, mm -hmm. are they shame about or shame of being wrong because inwardly they know they're wrong, or are they ashamed of being wrong because are they concerned about what others think? I mean, what it depends on, I guess, what what topic it is, right? I mean, for me, I feel like shame generally comes. Well, it depends. Are you doing something to harm somebody, or are you doing something? that isn't harming someone, but you're afraid of what other people are, are going to think, you know, or if they're going to judge you. I think, that, I think that shame can be helpful if you're doing something bad 
or hurtful to someone. How about a transgender person? They know, inwardly, they all know it's wrong. They just don't know how to uh, overcome it. No, I, I, well, I don't agree with that, and so I won't. I can't go down that line. <laughs>